All right, we're back here on 97.3 ESPN South Jersey. I want to remind people, Joe Namath's new book is out and on sale now. All the way, My Life in Four Quarters, a story of football, fame, and redemption. Don't forget to pick up a copy. Great Mother's Day gift. Uh, Barnes & Noble or go online. Joe Namath. We had him on the show not too long ago in August. It was a great, uh, great interview. But now let's go to another Philly great. He was a part of that 1980 World Series championship team. Let's introduce and go to the sports hotline and welcome into the locker room, Greg Luzinski. What's up, Greg? Pretty good. How you doing? All right, Greg. It's been a it's been a a sad week for Philly Nation, and I know uh, you were very fond of uh, Dave Montgomery. Um, I had a, a, an opportunity, and this is when I worked back in the day when I worked at the airlines. Uh, I had two, uh, Greg, I had two brushes with uh, sports royalty. I sat next to Al Davis on a plane one time, and I sat next to Dave Montgomery. And I can't tell you the difference between the two, night and day. Dave Montgomery was the nicest guy. I asked him a question. He, he, I was, no, I'm nobody. He, was not, he, he didn't have to talk to me. Was so nice and so gracious. And and answered like I just asked him a I asked him a couple of questions. He was like, really, he was really nice to talk to. Of course, on the other side of that equation, Al Davis, who are you? I don't know who you are. So that's just the kind of guy uh, Dave Montgomery was. Yeah, a lot of questions you break. I, uh, you know, you might call him uh, Mr. Baseball because that's what his whole life uh, uh, evolved around. Uh, you know, he was uh, with Phillies and. Uh, 1971, uh, and you know the amazing part is uh, he he kept score of every game played, whether it was uh, home or away, <laughs> and he kept he kept uh, uh, in his garage. He's got all all the scorecards and uh, obviously newspapers uh, from every game. So he he was uh, just a collector of baseball and very knowledgeable. Of, I think one of the big things he did, though, uh, besides uh, you know the stadium being the new stadium being built, he had a lot to do with that in the city of Philadelphia. That he got the players uh, involved in uh, charitable organizations uh, throughout uh, uh, the Delaware Valley, to where uh, you know not only were they on the baseball field, but uh, they they were seen at a lot of charitable events and they had their own charities, and so. Uh, you got a, a mix of players with with, with the fans, so uh, it, it 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 was a, a big credit to David. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of accolades thrown his way, and uh, well deserved. And uh, I think on June 6th uh, there'll be a memorial service, uh, a celebration of life at the ballpark at three o'clock uh, for Mr. Montgomery. Yeah, I wanted to get you on, uh, Greg, because like, you know, you've been around since 1970. You've known Dave for a long time. I was amazed. You always can judge a man's character by you see the emotion from Larry Boa, uh, Mickey Morandini. I mean, see everybody that everybody that's been uh, talked about, everybody that's been interviewed about Dave Montgomery is very, very emotional for him uh, to talk about him. That's a that's a testament to, to the kind of man that he was, man. Uh, without question, I mean, uh, you know, he he made himself visible. Uh, you know, he was uh, a guy that I was always around that, uh, you know, like I said, made himself visible. And a lot of us, uh, you know, we grew up together in the organization from, uh, you know, 71 uh, when he first came in with Bill Giles till uh, you know, obviously uh, his passing uh, last week. So, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of stories, there's a lot of memories, and there's a lot of <laughs> communication between the between uh, Montgomery and the players, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, the city of Philadelphia. And I, 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 you know, he was uh, uh, a sports guy. I mean, he, he came from, uh, you know, Penn Charter, yeah. obviously in high school, then went to uh, University or Penn, Pennsylvania. Uh, he was uh, a big palestra guy. Uh, you know, he loved the palestra in, in, in Philadelphia and, uh, you know, worked at Veterans Stadium with Giles, and then they. Both went uh, to put Citizens Bank Park together, and he was—he uh, had a lot to say with that. I know he was also well respected in MLB circle as far as uh, uh, being part 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 owner of the Phillies and uh, you know the commissioner's office, and uh, had lent uh, a lot of uh, a good good word to MLB and some suggestions, which uh, eventually I think MLB took some. We're we're talking with Greg Lazinski. Philly great, 1980 World Series champion. Uh, Greg, the camaraderie, chemistry, 
Uh, I mean, you saw Bo get emotional talking about he, he was even like uh, like a father figure. Bo was a year older than you know, a year older than Dave. I mean, that whole I guess he he personified that closeness. That did that permeate into the into the locker room for you the, for the players? Well, I think the you know as far as the organization goes, like I said, he was there, and he made uh, everybody feel at home. Whether you were homegrown Philadelphia Philly or you were you were brought in through free agency or trade, so uh, you know he knew uh, that uh, there were going to be some rough times, which the Phillies did have, but uh, that eventually uh, you know it, it'll come around to come around to put something together and. Uh, you know, they did a tremendous job. You know, they brought in the Utley and Rollins and Howard, you know, people of that nature um, mm-hmm. through the system, went outside. You know, Jim Tomey was a great acquisition. And when you see people like that, the that free agents that came to Philadelphia, like a Tomey, and see his reaction and uh, read about his quotes, you know, about uh, Dave Montgomery, you know that, uh, you know, he's a quality human being and uh, just sorry to see him go. Yeah, it's, it's a sad time. Bull, let's talk a little bit about the current Phillies. This team is fun to watch. I was just saying prior to you coming on, a little inconsistent. Are you worried about their offense or the lack of uh, consistency, or is that something that baseball teams go through, especially in the beginning of the season? Well, well some teams go through that. But uh, yesterday was like, uh, you know, playing against Kansas City was like a deadbeat game. Yeah. There didn't look like there was much energy on that field. And, uh, you know, I think that that's happened a few times this year. And uh, don't ask me why, but uh, it has. I know that uh, the success of our ball club so far from the offensive standpoint has come from the fact that we can hit the ball out of the ballpark. It seems like uh, when you go back and uh, look at a lot of the victories we've had, uh, you know, we've hit home runs in those games to uh, not only uh, – you know, put those crooked numbers on the board. Right. So, uh, you know, it is a team that can uh, score fast and come back from deficits. But, uh, you know, uh, they have hit some flat games. And uh, I think yesterday definitely was one of them. Uh, they, they've seen that Bailey before, you know, the pitcher. So they should have had an idea of, of, of what he has and, you know, how, how he uses it. But uh, uh, the inconsistency so far is, you know, you know, it has shown, but uh, hopefully it'll get more consistent. Uh, I think the center fielder needs to shake it a little yeah. bit. Uh, we are just talking know, about it. I mean, did you see that one play, Greg, last night, the one at bat he had? The ball was in a catcher's glove, and then he swung his bat. I've never seen yeah, anything like that in my had, life. Yeah, he's he's had some real bad at bats in crucial, crucial situations, uh, situations where he needs to put the ball in play. And uh, I know he was hurt. He's coming back from injury. But uh, I think for Odubel, uh it, it, it's time he wake up and smell coffee because, uh, uh, you know, they'll be looking for a center field because they do have a strong lineup, uh, you know, from top to bottom. And uh, all of a sudden you have a weak link that your center fielder, you're going to be out there looking. Uh, Greg, let's take a look. Let's take a walk back down memory lane, back and back to uh, like I guess like 1977, 1978, 1979. Prior to uh, you know, you guys we were the, competed with the Dodgers, couldn't get over the hump. Um, what was the chemistry like in that squad before you guys had? Like, was there any anybody, any one leader that stood out? Or like, it's always been documented that when Pete Rose came in, he kind of woke you guys up. Explain what was that. Well, you know, the first year he was there, we didn't win. We didn't win it, so uh, we we should have. But you know, you, we we didn't. Uh, obviously, you know, he, he, I think one of, one of the things Pete did without question was the fact that uh, he 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 made uh, Mike Schmidt realize the type of player he really could be, and uh, he helped Mike out uh, tremendously. Uh, the, the years he was there, and obviously, you know, he was MVP of the season, MVP of, you know, World Series. So, uh, it, it, you know, you get one guy like a, uh, a Mike Schmidt that's in the middle of your lineup that's, that gets very, very hot. Uh, he can carry a ball club, and, uh, you know, Schmidt, he had a tremendous, you know, had a good year there, solid year for us, and was hot in the playoffs. But uh, I think, you know, it's, it's going to take all 25 guys to to win, and you look at 1980 when we finally did win it. Uh, you know our minor league system helped us out 
in, in a lot of ways, you know, with Moreland and uh, Lonnie Smith right. and uh, uh, Marty Bystrom as a pitcher. So, it, you know, it, it, it's a it's a case where you're going to use 25, uh, 25 guys and more, and hopefully you're clicking on the same cylinder. Well, uh, Bo, I got to tell you, you know, 1980 was my uh, my senior year in high school. And I remember all four of the professional teams in this area went to their respective championships. And yeah, that was right. that was an exciting, exciting time to be a uh, to be a sports fan in Philadelphia. But I'm looking at your stats. I mean, for a power hitter, look at you. You bet your your career average is 276. I mean, that's awesome. That talk about consistency. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I I would have been a little better at that, except for the fact that uh, you know you know I got hurt a couple of years and uh, had had a had a bad knee, uh, so you know it it, it it hurt me to the the fact that I couldn't run as well for a while. But uh, you know my my objective was uh, obviously to put the ball play play the game play play it in the middle of the field, and uh, I took pride in trying to drive that running. Hey, Bull, one last one last question before we let you go. Uh, did you see a lot of shifts when you played? Uh, no, there were a few shifts. Maybe on a Willie Stargell, uh, Willie McCovey, shifts of that, you know, like that. But uh, uh, I don't remember. Know, yeah, because I don't remember you getting shifted on or even Schmidt. I mean, I don't uh, know. Would you – you you could you could put the ball in all, all fields. I mean, you weren't a – would you say you were a pull hitter? No, well, I think, you know, sometimes as your career goes on, you try to hit the situation a little bit more, you know, especially late in games where you're trying to drive the ball to the ballpark and you might try to pull a little bit more. But I think the greatest compliments to hitters is when uh, teams play you straight away. It, it goes to show you that, that you can spray the ball and you're going to use the field. So, uh, you know, that, that that's one of the things, uh, that, you know, that I tried to do, like I said. Uh, that man on second or that man on third, when the pitcher's got two outs and they're one pitch away from getting out of the inning, you get that that base hit. You know, it kind of breaks their backs and uh, it keeps them out there a little bit longer. Well, I'll tell you what, I want to thank you for the memories that you've given uh, given us over the. I mean, I'll never forget that '80 team. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch you and your career. And uh, one of my favorite Phillies, of course, you're down at the ballpark most nights. The fans can come up and talk to you at uh, Bulls Barbecue. How's that going? I, yeah. I was at the game. I, I was at one game this year, but I have a four-year-old little girl, and all she wanted to do was play at the uh, that playhouse. I couldn't get her over to Bulls Barbecue. Oh, I got to come over and say hi. <laughs> well, stop by when you get a chance. You know, Bulls Barbecue is uh, now in left field. And, uh, uh, again, uh, you know, stop by, say hello. I'm out there most of the time. All I, uh, right. Usually, I you know usually I hang around about the seventh inning, and then uh, you know I head upstairs a couple suites, and then uh, and make my way home after the game. All right, Greg Luzitz, thank you so much, Greg, to come and, spe- and, and also talking about Dave Montgomery. Uh, he'll be sorely missed, uh, but he gave us a lot. He gave us a lot of a lot of great memories with the Philadelphia Phillies, and uh, thank I want to thank you for sharing that with us. All right, thank you. All right, there's Greg Luzinski, a great Philadelphia Philly. 1980 World Series champion, unbelievable. I'll never forget those times.